so let's begin. Okay. Tell me how it all started, you and basketball. Me and basketball? Uh, it started when I came home one day and uh, my mom, I had told my mom that uh, my knees were hurting after a baseball game and she said, well, you know, I play basketball, so why don't you try that? And two days later, I tried it and here I am now. So, uh, how old were you? Uh, when I first started, like, professionally or when I took it seriously? Yeah, yeah, took it seriously. When I took it seriously, I started when I was like 14, 15. So before that, you were a baseball player? Yes. Why baseball? Um, where I grew up at is really big uh, in America. In southern states, baseball is like the number one sport. So I grew up watching it all the time and I just fell in love with it, but I got too tall, I felt, and my mom told me to try something else and it worked out. Have you had any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have one younger sister. And she's doing sports right now? No, she's uh, working in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Uh, mother basketball? My mother played basketball, my father was a golfer, but my father now, I mean, he's been in the military for 30 years, and my mom works for a bank. So you started to play basketball, and then when did you uh, learn to play that, and when, when, where did you play, uh, learn in college? Uh, I started to play basketball at that time. I learned actually from my mom. Uh, after that, I went to like a really, really prestigious high school called Oak Hill Academy where Carmelo Anthony went and Sagana, yeah, Sagana uh, Jop and a lot of others like uh, Rajon Rondo, Josh Smith, all of them went there. And um, after that, <clears throat> I went to Temple University in Philadelphia for college. And then after college, my professional career started. When you were a little baseball player, what, what dreams you had then? Um, when I was a baseball player, my dreams would be just like Ken Griffey Jr. That was my favorite, favorite baseball player, like all time at the time. I wore the same number as him, and I just thought he was just the, the greatest baseball player ever. And then you switched to basketball, and your dreams changed? Of course. <laughs> uh, when I switched to basketball, my dreams changed. Obviously, to, to make it to the NBA, to be like one of the best basketball players in the world. Uh, I didn't, I mean, I made it to have a shot at the NBA. Um, I'm actually one of the best basketball players in the world because I'm playing professionally in Europe. So I've, I've achieved my dream basically, and I'm still living it. So it's not bad at all. How, how close were you to the NBA? Uh, one day, <laughs> one day. When it happened? Um, I got cut the day right, the day right before opening day. So it's one 24 hours and I could have been in there, but it didn't happen, so. How do you remember the college time, the student time? College, it was the best four years of my life. Uh, college is something everybody should experience. If you're an athlete, a regular student, or you just want to just further your education more, it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful place to go. In your university, which of the sports was the most popular? Basketball. Then you came to Europe. How was the switch from America to basketball? Um, it was a it was a big switch uh, because a lot of the things that you can do in America you can't really do in Europe, and it took it took a year for me to get adjusted. But now it's it's just like it's second hand to me. I, I, it's no difference now. That was France, yeah. France was the first place I went to. How do yeah. you remember the time and how old were you? Uh, I were I was twenty three when I went to France. And it was a great experience because in high school, I took French lessons, like in school for two years. And then lo and behold, I go to France for my first European experience. So I could speak the language, I could get around with the locals, I could navigate myself. And I was learning basketball easier because I could talk with the domestic players as well. And it helped out, it helped out greatly. Um, so tell, tell us where have you played? France? Played. I played in France for three years. <clears throat> after France, I went to Turkey. After Turkey, I went to Italy, and then now I'm in beautiful Riga, Latvia. So how languages do you speak? How long? No, 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 how languages do you speak? 
I speak French, I speak Italian, and I speak a little bit of Turkish. How is it Latvian? My Latvian is, uh, is lobby. <laughs> How do you think which, which, which was the best season for you? My, year in my best season, I would have to say all of them because each season I learned something new about myself. Each season I got better at something and each season I learned something new about a different country. So I feel like as long as I'm better in myself as a person, as a basketball player and as like a, a, a teammate, then each year is, is a great season. What are there big differences between Europe and Yes, it's, it's big differences. Uh, the culture is different in Europe. Uh, the people are different in Europe. Uh, the weather, <laughs> um, the way people interact with each other in Europe is, is totally different in America. And, and of course, the governments over here in Europe are totally different than the ones in America. But we, we're coming up to be the same way. So it's, it's starting to even out in a way. What's the biggest thing that you miss from Home. Biggest thing I miss from my home would be my grandmother's cooking. What she's cooking? Uh, she cooks everything. Um, macaroni and cheese, collard greens, sweet potatoes, apple pies, pumpkin pies, pecan pies. Uh, I just, I mean, the list goes on. You name it, she'll cook it. What do you usually do when you go back home? Do you spend family? Yeah, uh, when I first get home, the first two days I do nothing. I just go in my house, I relax, throw all my bags down, do absolutely nothing, go out to eat some places that I missed while I was over in Europe. And then after um, I go see my grandmother, my mom, my dad, my sister, and just try to catch up with a lot of friends. When you get the offer to come to Riga, uh, how much do you know about this place? Is Latvia, have you heard something about this before? Yeah, um, I heard about Riga my first year in France because the team I was on, we actually played against uh, ASK Riga. But when I arrived, they played them that day, so I really didn't get to play them. And I asked my teammates, how was the trip to Riga? And they said it was actually really nice. They, uh, they told me about one of the ex-players that played here, Ricardo Marsh, and how he you know, treated them very well when he was out here. And they said, you know, one thing about Riga is that everybody speaks English and they, they embrace you really quickly. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I wish I can go one day. And so when I got the offer to come here, I was like, oh, that, that, that seemed like it would be a great, great offer to go to. And then once I found out, once I signed and then D. Brown had signed, I was like, man, that's great because I've known him from college. We, we've, we've battled against each other from high school and even in college. So. It was, it was a great thing to come here. I didn't know really much about the actual city and the culture, but I just knew from little things when people told me. But I looked up some things and I'm trying to go around and see all the sites as much as possible now. What else do you like in Riga? The fact that people speak in English. <laughs> um, I like that Riga has a lot of different touristic sites. Um, down in old Riga, it's an old church, I want to say, that's sunken into the ground. It shows how much Riga is like grown. Um, in, the, in the middle, where the opera house is, it's, it's like it's always something to do around there. It's nice parks so you can walk around. You don't really see that in Eastern Europe countries like that. You really see a lot of gloominess and not too many people wanting to be out. But here in Riga, you see a lot of people being out trying to interact. Uh, it's, it's the biggest city in Latvia, so it's a lot of people trying to move around and communicate. And I think that is great for being in Eastern Europe because if you look at other countries, I mean other cities over here, like in Moscow, for example, it's very gloomy. People don't look too friendly, but here people look very, very friendly and it's nice. How could you describe uh, Latvian people? How do I describe them? <laughs> I, I describe them as very, very funny. Like. Um, from JV to, to, to my coaches, everybody is funny. Everybody has a great time, and we all treat each other like family.